Hey, what's up guys? It's John here, Unity 3D Coder, and today's video we're going to be focusing on enums, also known as enumerations. So what's an enum? An enum is basically an enumeration of states, is how I look at them. So for example, uh, when you use an enum, it means you have different states. Uh, a perfect example is for an item. Um, you might have a type of item, right? You might have items that are consumable, or you might have items that are um, a weapon, or you might have an item that's usable or tradable, and so forth, or wearable, so forth. So in order, instead of having to create variables for each of those things and having to check if it's that item, you can use an enum to just specify a state for that item. So you can say that this item is, through an enum, um, this item is, you know, consumable, and so forth. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a cool example here. Oftentimes, enums are also used in finite state machines, which are for enemy AI. You use them to determine state. So for instance, in your game, you might have a state of uh, searching. You might have a state for attacking, a state for dying, a state for fleeing. Well, you can use an enum to simplify this, and based on the current state, you run logic. So let's check out some examples here. How do we declare an enum? So typically, the standard for an enum is you can put them inside the class or outside. Okay, it doesn't matter. However, for what I typically use, I put them inside at the top of the class. So above my variables, above all my functions, I put the enum there. The way you do that is you declare it as a public enum, the keyword enum. All right, and it says the enum keyword is used to declare an enumeration, a distinct type consisting of a set name constants called the enumerator list. So basically, it's just a bunch of variables that are constant, which can't change. All right, if a variable is constant, it means it can't be changed. The value can't change. Okay. So here we go. So we create an enum. Let's say we're going to create an enum of, of um, weapon types or items. Okay. So we're going to say here public enum, and then every variable has a name. So it's just like that. So public enum um, item type. And then there's no parentheses, uh, but use the open, closing, curly braces. So it's almost like a property. If you're not familiar with properties, check out the intermediate series on properties. So here's our enum, public enum item type. Now what goes here is physically we can type out the name of this item. So for instance, what type of, what type of item types do we have for our, our imaginary RPG game? We have consumable, and then you separate each one by a comma. So I say consumable, we have tradable, we have, um, what else do we have? We have consumable, we have tradable, we have wearable, and then we also have um, item type weapon. All right, so you can consume it, you can trade it, you can wear it, or it's a weapon, okay? And the very last one does not require a comma, all right? Just leave it like that. Now, what you do here, typically with the standard, is these can be named whatever they want. They're just variables of item type. And what I typically do is the naming convention that you should do is you use capital uh, letters for these. So consumable, tradable, the first letter, first word is always going to be capital. All right, so here's our enum of item type. Now, how do we actually use this? Well, the way we use this is we need to create a variable that has a type of item type. So like this. So we say here, public item type, and then we say, uh, for instance, current item type. And what this is going to allow me to do now is if I hop in here into Unity and I put this on the main camera, I can create items and specify their type. You'll see here, current item type for this item. If this was an item, it would be consumable. Well, I have a drop down of tradable, and then a wearable, and then a weapon. Now, how do we use this to actually work on logic? Well, a great example of this would be to create a finite state machine, which is used in artificial intelligence. All right, and it's just basically a state machine that allows you to use an enum and cycle through states. So let's pretend we were creating an AI, um, an AI state machine for three types. Okay, we have attack, we have search, and then we have our dead state. So we need an enum for that. So we say public enum, and then what are we doing here? So it's our current, it's our enemy state, right? So enemy state, and what states do we have? We have a searching state, we have an attacking state, and we have a dead state. Now I need a variable that controls that state. So I say here, public enemy state, the variable type, all right, the data type needs to be the same as the enum type. So public enemy state, 
and then we say current enemy state. All right, and in the inspector we can uh, we can fill it in. I could also, I believe, say here enemy state dot, and then I have my three states. So I could say by at the start, and I think you actually have to do it in start. I'm not sure you can declare it like that. So you would have your current enemy state here, and then at the state of the game for your AI, let's go ahead and have it searching. So we're going to say enemy state. Oops, sorry, you got to say current enemy state equals enemy state dot searching. And that's how you select items from your enum. So here we go, enemy state dot searching. And let's head back into Unity. And you'll see here we have our state machine, state machine set up. So here we have searching, attacking, and dead. Now, how do we create the logic for this? Well, we got to use update. In an update, we're going to switch through the current enemy state. And based on which state it's in, it's going to have different logic. So check this out. So we're going to switch through the current enemy state. And if you're not familiar with switch statements, check out the fundamental series on switch statements. And here we have a switch current enemy state. And our case values are going to be enemy state dot attacking. So if the current state is the attacking state, we're going to say debug.log attacking. All right, we're going to print that out forever. And then here we have another case for enemy state. We have searching. All right, and if you're searching, we're going to say debug.log searching. And then here we have one more. We have case enemy state dead. And if you're in that state, that means your player has died. All right, so we're going to say here debug.log dead. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you guys. Uh, before we wrap up this video and that specifically is how to access enums from another class I want to show you this working first so let's go into update here you can see here we have our searching state right now we're in searching so when I run the game it's gonna print out searching now watch what happens when I change the state to attacking there you go we're attacking All right, but you also notice here something really weird why is searching still getting called Because searching should not be getting called, but it is. So let's find out why. The current, ah, yes. The current, the enum script was on both the main camera and the directional light. So if we go ahead and run it again, uh, let me get rid of this. If we go ahead and run it again, uh, now it will work perfectly. <clears throat> so you can see here on the main camera it's searching. If I go into the attacking state, it transitions nicely, and then to the dead state. Now, what I want to show you guys to wrap up is how to access this enum and change the value through another script. Because most likely you're going to need to do that for changes of item types or changes to your AI through other factors. You need to be able to access the variable that sets the current enum. Uh, the first thing we need to do to access it from here is decide how we want to do it. So we're going to do it with the space key. Now, in order to do this, uh, get key down. In order to do this, we need to change the value of this variable here, which is current enemy state. And because it's just a public variable, I don't actually have access to it. Uh, so what I can do is I need to basically use get component to get a handle to the script, and then I can do it. So this script is going to be on the same object as our enum example, which is the main camera. So I'm just going to create a handle to that script. I'm going to say private enum, I'm sorry, not private, yeah, private enum example. And then we're going to say enum example. <clears throat> and if you're not familiar with what I'm doing here with get component, check out my video in the miscellaneous section on get component. Very useful to know. So now that I have my handle, I'm going to go ahead and assign my handle to the component, which is on the same game object. So I'm going to grab the enum example. All right, now that I have access to that variable of current enemy state, let's go ahead and change it. So when I hit the space key, I want to say current enemy state. Oops, sorry, I got to say enum example dot current enemy state equals. And here's how it is. If you look in the tooltip, here's how easy it is to access your enum. It's the script name dot the enum name, and then you have your states. So I say enum example dot enemy state dot attacking. So which one of these do I want to transition to? Let's go ahead and say attacking. So when I hit the space key, it's going to switch to attacking. All right, so if we go ahead and restart this. So right now we're searching, and if I hit the space key, whoops, I never attached the script. All right, so now if I go ahead and hit the space key, we're searching, and there you go. 
We stopped searching and now we're in the attack state. Now, to show you guys something really cool also is how would I randomize which one it is? What if when I hit the space key, I want to randomize which one? In order to do that, it's important to know how these enums actually work. So to you and me, we're reading it off as enemy state, here's our enum, and then we have a searching, attacking, and dead. Well, what the compiler reads is 0, 1, 2, and if I had other options, it would be so forth. So this is 0, you have 1, you have 2, 3, 4, forever, I mean, however many states you have, there's a number that resembles it. And what we can do now is we can use what we learned in the last video called typecast. Okay, just like when you instantiate a game object using as game object, that's a typecast. In doing that, we can randomize the state. So check this out. I can say here, if input dot get key down, Kiko dot space, I can say here, enum example dot current enemy state, and I want to randomize it. So I'm going to say, um, trying to think actually how to randomize it uh, without using a function actually. But um, what we can do here is we can say enum example dot current enemy state, and then I think we can do this. Basically, we're going to generate a random number. So we're going to say random dot range, and we're going to say how many states do we have? We have zero. We have three states, right? So it's going to be zero three. So it's going to call zero one and two. And random dot range, the max is never called. So it's zero one and two are the options that it can do. So we're going to say here current enemy state equals random dot range. And we're going to typecast that value as an, uh, as an enemy type. So we're going to say here, enum example.enemy state. Okay? So it should typecast whatever this value is and correlate it with the enemy state. So let's go ahead and test that out, see if it worked. And there you go. So if I hit space again, attacking. Hit space again, still attack. Or no, now it's back to searching. So it's working. So there you go. Little bonus. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not following me on Facebook and Twitter, go ahead and do so. Go to digitalgaminginstitute.com to get the links. And as always, thank you for watching.